there definitely is a chance that some people are thinking, okay, taxes are going to go up. I have some long-term unrealized gains. I better sell now before the taxes hit. There is that possibility. But we've been seeing a lot of rumors of regulation that have been deeply spooking the crypto markets. There were some rumors floating around that Janet Yellen was going to put these taxes on, on capital gains on crypto, which do not seem to be verified. So I think the larger narrative here is that the crypto market is just really spooked by any fear of government interference or government intervention in the markets. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Ryan, it's also been on such a run. I mean, it went kind of straight up to 63. So you have to expect this kind of volatility. Is it possible that this will bring in a wave of new buyers of people who say, I mean, you know, given you don't have to buy the whole thing, you can just buy exposure any which way at this point. Um, just those who look at this as a buying opportunity. Yeah, I think that's right. And if you look at the performance just year to date, the total crypto market cap is still up 100%. Bitcoin is still up 65%. So even though we've come back about 25%, that's just the normal course of volatility. If you look at any other time period outside of the one week, the 24 hour, the one month, uh, Bitcoin and crypto writ large are still the highest performing asset classes and the highest performing mega assets. So this could be a good buying opportunity. The other thing that I'll note is if you look at prior cycles, the time that crypto has gotten into trouble and when it's really marked a local top has been when it's risen too steeply, too fast. And believe it or not, even though we've had a major run up this year, we haven't seen something analogous to the last couple of cycles where the local top and that cyclical top was really marked by a doubling of the Bitcoin and Ethereum price in less than a week, which is an insane pace of growth. We haven't seen anything close to that. So sure. I think um, if you're looking for a blow off top, this probably isn't it. It's probably just the, the usual course of volatility. And um, and we'd actually expect in a typical bull cycle to have six pullbacks of about 30% or more. We've had about three so far versus six in 2017, for instance. So you're, uh, to put it kind of, to put a point on it, would say still bullish, um, if I may. But Emily, I, I guess the- Zoom out. Yeah, <laughs> the, the regulatory point is really interesting because when you look uh, anecdotally around on TikTok and see people's reaction to the capital gains tax and how it might affect, you know, their holdings of crypto, they go, ah, if anyone asks, just say you forgot the password, you don't own it anymore. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of filled with these coy, you know, here's a, you can get around the IRS type of things. And, and I do wonder how that plays out. You know, maybe it's not capital gains tax, but is there some, you know, more severe regulation coming that would have a bigger impact on the market and, and really do more to chase off potential buyers? Sure. I mean, that is the $2 trillion question because, you know, the, as the crypto market gets bigger, regulators are going to start paying more attention. Tax collectors are going to start paying more attention. This is the other side of the coin. Everybody wants crypto to go mainstream, but when something goes mainstream, it's subject to mainstream rules like taxes. But I think, you know, in the United States, I think the biggest risk to the cryptocurrency industry is a lack of regulatory clarity. There are just a lot of people that are really confused about how crypto taxes work or, you know, money transmitter licenses, for example, for cryptocurrency exchanges vary state by state. There's a lot of murkiness about if something is a security or not. And I think that is really dangerous to the industry because if you don't know where the rules are, you could accidentally break them or you might not even want to take that risk. And that is actually in the past have caused some cryptocurrency startups to leave the United States. So yeah. I think this is probably the biggest risk that we're looking at going forward. Ryan, quick final word. I think the Dogecoin run up, especially with Doge Day and all the rest of it, the last, I mean, did, did that tell you things were getting too frothy? Um, and if so, do you say to people, you know, Bitcoin's kind of the one you look at in a pullback like this? Or, you know, I guess what jumps out to you as, as kind of an attractive opportunity? Well, I think for better or for worse, when you look at these cycles historically, everything rises at the same pace. And then when the tide goes out, you start to see which assets actually have some, some long-term interesting fundamentals. So I think as we look around the asset class, Bitcoin and Ethereum are obviously your bellwethers. But if you think about this capital gains issue, one of the unintended consequences might be that more capital is locked in this crypto yes. ecosystem long term and medium term. And ultimately, that's going to be to the benefit of this entire new class of assets uh, that are referred to as DeFi assets, essentially being able to borrow against existing crypto holdings rather than sell them and trigger a taxable event. You might have structurally higher interest rates. You might have a, a, a better uh, tax set up to yeah. invest in those assets and those protocols and, and that ecosystem versus taking money out of the equation. So it's I, I still think that there's a lot of upside in this market. And we're just seeing the very tip of the iceberg. Just need uh, a little bit uh, more of a long term holder base and long term mindset. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.